80% of its citizens live in public housing. We call it flats. You see it all around the flats in Singapore. 80% of the citizens live in such places. How do you make sure that this block is not just the Chinese, this block is not just the Malays or just the Indians? Because remember, if it was to happen like that, then it's the same as what Raffles did, right? Chinese one side, Indians one side. So the government says it cannot be like that. So what they did was there's a law, a policy called the ethnic integration policy. If you want to buy a flat, a unit in a block of flats, then the government would say, let's see, we have 15% Malay, we have 75% Chinese, 10% Indian. That means if you're Chinese, if the people living in that block is not yet 75%, you can buy. But what if it's already 75%? No. You've got to find somewhere else to live. So in that way, the government makes sure that the people living in the flat is the same as the percentage of people living in the country. And this is where I will tell you why the thinking behind the importance of multiculturalism became very, very important. Because of Singapore's history, what was the education system like? So the Malays had their own school, Chinese had their own school, Indians and so on, all had their own schools, right? And so the education system is all very separate. Everybody learned different things. And so learning from history, the Singapore government decided that Yes, we are all different, but we must come together. Another thing which I want to mention is this term called meritocracy. So in Singapore, this word meritocracy has become very, very important. Basically, meritocracy says, right, you can be successful. No, regardless, you are Malay, Chinese, Indian, or others, so long as you put in a lot of effort in the things that you do, for example, in your studies, you will all take the same exams and there is no special treatment so long as you do very well for the exams, everybody will go forward. So basically the idea here is, yes, you might be Malay, Chinese, Indian, you have all your different cultures, but everybody experience the same exam. Everybody, when they go to school, they learn the same thing, must learn the same subjects. Okay. And how do they make sure it happen? You can have your Malay school, your Chinese school, whatever, but at the end of the day, you must take one single exam. So for primary school, it is called the PSLE. After primary school comes secondary school, like your high school. So if you take another national exam, it's called the GCE O-Levels. And then after you take the O-Levels, two more years, you take the GCE A-Levels. And if you're results are good enough, that's where you go to university. And so, what other things did they do? They made sure that everybody in the school, every morning when the bell rings, everybody must line up in front of the Singapore flag, and then they must sing the national anthem and say the national pledge. What's important here, the government says, everybody must feel that they are Singaporean. And another thing they did, they made sure that everybody speaks English. We call it bilingualism policy, where in schools, most of the subjects are taught in English. So that's why in Singapore, everybody speaks English, and we also learn our mother tongue. So for me, I learn Malay as my mother tongue, the Chinese will learn Mandarin, and then the Indians will learn Tamil and so on. But most of the time, we speak English with each other. Singapore is such a multicultural country everybody will try to have more things for their own culture and this is no good if that happens. So the job of a good government is this. They say, yes, I know you're Malay, Indian, Chinese and you have your own culture, but I must make sure that everybody is not special, meaning everybody is treated equally. So for example, we have an organization that's called the IRO, the Interreligious Organization, where it takes charge of all the major religions in Singapore and here they represent 10 religions. So for example, this is, these are members of the IRO. So if let's say they open a new building and they say we must have prayers, so it is not just one 
leader from one religion, but leaders from all the religions come and do the prayers. They also allow these organizations to help their own community. So in Singapore, for example, Mendaki helps the Malays, the CDAC helps the Chinese, the SINDA helps the Indians, the Eurasian Association helps the Eurasian. Sometimes there can be a problem because remember, in Singapore, the Chinese represents 75% of the population. So there is always a worry. What happens if the Chinese controls everything? What happens to the smaller minority groups? So the government formed this group. It's called the Presidential Council of Minority Rights. Basically, the president appoints certain people to make sure that the laws in Singapore is fair to every ethnic group. Now, how do you prevent unfairness in employment? How do you prevent, for example, a Chinese company or any company from just employing somebody from their own ethnic group? So what you have is this organization called TAFEP. It makes sure that there is fairness even when companies hire people. Well, this is not law. This is an organization that tries to make sure, but it is not backed by law.